Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. In the last tutorial, we were just doing a very basic shading uh, using all the procedural shading that uh, Maya and Arnold can provide for this. This time I want to show you guys how I would tackle this area right here and also this area right here. I think that would be a really good exercise for you so that you can get uh, a little bit more of an accurate look for the blade. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, it's all about those details. Now, this one I already UV mapped, but I'm going to take a look at it again. I turn this off. I think at this and turn this off. I think it I don't like that it's sticking out, so I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. Um actually, let me UV map it again. All right, UV editor. It's a little close to the edges. I just want to go ahead and scale it down a little bit. Just gonna double check to make sure it's not stretched. It's a little stretch on the edges, but that's gonna be metal, so I'm not too worried about that. What I'm trying to get is the details here. So let's go back to object mode. We're gonna do the same thing for this one. We're gonna go to UVs, planar mapping, just basic planar mapping. That should give me enough details. Let's go to UVs. Again, I like to scale it down just a tiny bit. All right, so now that we have these two UV mapped, let's go ahead and scoot these over. So I'm going to place them all in one map so it just makes it easier for me. And you guys can see how we can tackle uh, two objects with one map. So select both of your objects. Let's go to Image, UV Snap, and this is going to be the blade and body, right? UV Snap. Again, this is going to be a 1024 map. I think that should be good enough. And then apply and close. Let's go ahead and hop into Photoshop. If you go to your sword project and your images, you will find it here. Now, it's really important that you guys are used, uh, setting your project before you even start texturing because of these reasons. Maya set, uh, sends images, sends renders, and also looks for texture. So make sure that you've set your project. Uh, all right, let's create a layer. I like to make sure that I can see my UVs. So there they are. So I'm going to try to see if I can use this as, uh, it's always good to use this as reference. So here is the sword. I brought it in and I'm trying to first capture this kind of color. So I'm going to color pick. It's always kind of nice that you can color pick these things. Uh, make sure you create a new layer. I'm going to make sure I call this UV snap and I'm going to lock it just in case and make a selection. Or you can just grab a paintbrush and do it. It's really up to you. There's no right or wrong. I'm going to do a shift backspace, which is going to give me a fill. Make sure it's foreground and click OK. Um, let's see. To get these type of details, I think it's going to be a little bit challenging. I am going to try to use my magic wand over here on the right and see if I can just kind of grab these uh, designs. I could design it myself, of course, but I'm just trying to make this really fast so you guys can get an idea get an idea of what to do. So I'm just going to, all right, let's see. My tolerance is too low. So let me go to 20. All right. So that's not working. Let's go to select color range. And if I scoot these over and I click on this color, it's going to pick that particular color. So if I wanted to pick more of a range, I can kind of do this and then click OK. So that's going to select those colors and that line. Now it's going to select everything else that's blue. So I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to deselect this part and then copy and paste which is going to make a new layer and I'm going to scoot these over. Now this is again just for reference. Make this very large. It's going to pixelate like crazy but at least I'm getting something going on here. Gonna keep increasing the scale just so I can try to get it to fit in here as well. It might have been easier for me to paint this. Um, all right, so now that I have that, what I can do is just kind of color pick that color and again create a new layer. Grab that paintbrush and I'm gonna grab a harder edge one because this is pretty sharp. And I can use the brackets to decrease my paintbrush. And using my fancy brush, I can just go ahead and start painting. 
again, this is just kind of like, it's going to be very rough, but hopefully it will give the idea to my director that this is the, the look that we're going to go for. Uh, I do have a tablet, so I am kind of painting with it so I can get um, some details here. Another method that you guys can paint would be to maybe grab the pen tool, which we have over here. And what I can do with the pen tool is just kind of make some marks. Let's say I need to zoom out here. Let's say I want this line to go all the way down here. I can grab this by holding down Alt. I can grab this and bring it up. And then make sure this one, you can grab this one and scale it down so I can um, make a straight line. And then I can go all the way up to the top here and again, get that nice little arc. But again, you gotta grab this guy and grab this one so that you can get a little bit more, a larger arc. Something like that. Might need to go back here and maybe reduce this one. Again, I'm just holding down Alt and then grab this one. And there we go. Press Ent, whoops, let's grab this one up here at the top too and scale it down. All right, what does that look like? Well, let's get rid of these design so you can see that this is like the quick version that I just made if you want you can also make a selection to get that sharp cut just go ahead and make a selection here and delete but first we have to rasterize it so right click on the shape one rasterize and now you can delete it because now it's just like a regular piece I can also make selections like this but it's very straight so just keep that in mind and then you can fill. So there's a lot of things you can do with uh, with Photoshop. Um, let me grab this and just kind of scoot it over a little bit. Um, this is pretty, pretty rough. Um, not the best work I've ever done by far, but hopefully it gets you guys the idea of how to do this. Uh, all right, let's move on. Um, all right, so we have this other brush. So I'm going to grab this and drag the layers into a folder. So this is going to be like, this is going to be my, I guess the body. I'm not convinced by the color. Let me take these and control E. So they're one layer. You can always double click here, go to color overlay, and then try to pick a better color that you feel like fits better with the sword. So maybe just a little bit more in the, whoops, too much blue. Just a tiny, somewhere in the middle. Okay. All right, let's work on this sword. This one's a little bit more painterly. So let's create a new layer. I'm gonna grab a soft brush this time. Hit in the brackets, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to paint this area here. It's a very soft brush because I need that transition. And then I can grab this color, which is, you know, it looks white, but it's actually just a little off white. You usually don't want to go all white. Um, and I'm going to put it below because um, it just has a tendency to blow out. So you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of color. So something a little bit soft. Some nice little transition there. Now these designs are going to be pretty challenging for me to um, create, but um, it's gonna be very similar to these ugly designs that I just made, but I wanna show you a little trick. So let's go ahead and grab this. I'm gonna create a new layer. So it's gonna be on top and it's gonna be that light color. Bring it down. So let's say I want to design this, uh, these little cute designs, right? Whee! So I like it, but I want to have it raise a little bit. What you can do is double click on this and there is this option called bevel and emboss. And you can ask for it to uh, do an inner or outer bevel, which is what I want is an outer bevel. And then I'm going to reduce the depth. And let me see if I can do chisel. Oh no, that sticks. Or chisel soft. Now nah, let's go back to smooth. 
And uh, let's reduce the size. So right now it's at 16. I can reduce it to something a little bit smaller, like let's say one or two. And then the nice thing is, is like I can continue painting this along the way. So if I want to, I can just kind of add some designs just, and it looks like it's beveled, which is really kind of neat. So I'm going to go around like this. Let's go ahead and have some fun, a little fun here. Doo -doo -doo. Let's get a little rainbow right here. Far from perfect. I understand that it's way far. Now I don't want to go all the way up the blade. So just kind of that's the design actually doesn't have that. So let me just make sure that it stays somewhere relatively close. Have some fun with your own design. Anything outside of this space is not going to show up. So feel free to go paint outside the lines and there we go. We have kind of like a really, really rough map. This is going to look silly, but um, all right, let's go to my UV snap. What I'm going to do is grab the magic wand and click on this empty area. Then I'm going to go to select, modify, contract 10 pixels. So that's going to give it a little bit of that wiggle room. And then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to do shift backspace with the 50% uh, gray. So it shows me um, where some areas I might have some issues with. So for example, well, this is outside of it, but it might be a good idea to go in and paint that area. So this is like a border. Let's make sure we deselect and then go ahead and paint the areas that you feel like it needs some color because it looks a little strange. Let's uh, hide the UV map and then we'll file save as. This is going to be my blade ball body CLR. I'm going to use a PSD because this is my working file and then save. Okay. So I also, since I'm here, I might as well create an emission map. So very similar to what we had before, we want to make sure that this area actually glows and it's, it's actually fairly easy. So what I really just need is, um, I don't need anything, but the glowing area. So uh, this is basically my map. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. This is going to be my emission. And then we'll go from there. All right, let's see what that looks like. Let's grab our object here. I'm going to, we have two separate shaders, so I don't want to affect that. Let's go ahead and assign it to new material, AI standard surface shader. This is going to be my blade and body shader. We're going to grab the color, click on that little output, delete this because that was for the ramp. Go to the file, click on that little folder, and I am going to go up into my images where I'm working and then click on CLR. If I press the number six, you can see the effect. Now, again, I mentioned it's not going to look anything like this because this is pretty rough, but you can see that I've got kind of like the idea. Now, if I grab this one, and again, I might want to delete the history and freeze the transformations, I can go to my emission click on the weight to increase it and you can see that it affects the whole blade. But if I go to color, click on the little output, go to file, click on that little folder and grab the emission, we now looks like it's glowing. So let's see what that looks like overall. So now we've got our really, uh, my badly drawn designs here. You can see that I have my designs there, but it's kind of looking a little bit like that sword. It glows, this part's standing out a little bit, and it's all just painted in. I should have picked a smaller brush. Let's see, I'm gonna go into my metalness and increase my metalness so this looks a little shinier. I'm also gonna decrease my, well, actually I'm gonna grab my anatropy and kinda help with the rotation a little bit to get that cool looking glow. I can always go back and repaint this if I want to, but um, I think overall this is giving you an idea of how to quickly UV map, create some really fast textures and kind of get an idea overall of the piece. So hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions.
And I will see you in the next tutorial where I'm going to go over just some really basic lighting and also a turntable to show off your blade. So, all right, guys, uh, again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please share this video if you think it's helpful for somebody out there. It can be your friends, it can be your coworkers, or it can be your, uh, your peers. Um, also, uh, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That's where you can find uh, free tutorials, free eBooks, and free downloads. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me. I hope you had a little bit of fun and you learned something. Keep creating and I will see you next time.